You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi everyone, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about the financial risks and rewards of entrepreneurship. So we're going to talk about money in entrepreneurship. And at a more general level, what is the role of thinking about money in in entrepreneurship? And specifically, I want to look at some statistics on the financial risks and some about the financial rewards and talk about how to think about these numbers and what they mean for you because you're interested in being an entrepreneur or if you're already running your own business. So let's start by looking at some interesting statistics about the financial risks in entrepreneurship. First of all, there's the just the risk of overall survival. You know, what is the likelihood that when you start a new business, it's still going to be trading after the first year or after the first few years? And there are many different numbers that are thrown around about this. The most well-researched ones that I've found, and I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to this, are based on American statistics for the average uh, lifespan of new companies. And the numbers are pretty harsh. So according to that data, one-fifth of startups die within the first year, and more than 50% are no longer in operation after five years. So that's an attrition rate of 20% in the first year and more than half after five years. So that's just a basic existence risk. Will you still be trading? What about the amount of money that you're going to make? Well, again, here, the data is pretty tough too. So there is some debate about how to measure this. But on average, entrepreneurs earn perhaps around a third less over the first 10 years than they could have earned in a paid job. And again, I'll put a link to the research that shows this in the show notes. Now, that one, I think, might not be that surprising to some people. You know, when you start a business, you obviously you're not paying yourself in the beginning and you're kind of investing in getting the business started up. But, I mean, we're talking over 10 years here as well, that the earnings are significantly lower for entrepreneurs than they perhaps might be if the same people had gone into paid employment. And you can have a look at the, some of the debates about uh, whether this is a um, fair comparison and so forth. But as a kind of worst case scenario, I think that's an interesting potential downside is you know, you're definitely not earning more. Now that brings us on to the next statistic, and that is about the investment. Because you could say, well, okay, so you're not going to earn more, but then again, you're probably not paying yourself an income and you're investing in the business and developing its capital value. And so, you know, entrepreneurs are, are actually effectively earning it in different ways, so to speak. Well, interestingly enough, the research seems to show that entrepreneurs on average don't earn a better return by founding startups than they would earn by investing in publicly traded stocks. In fact, they earn less from a risk return perspective. So those are some pretty harsh numbers. The majority are going out of business within the first five years. Uh, The entrepreneurs themselves are earning a third less than they may have done in paid employment. And even in terms of as an investment, statistically, on average, they're not earning more than they would have done if they just invested their money in publicly traded stocks. I'm not saying that these numbers are the best that we'll ever have, and I think there there are there's some debates about how you can measure these things, and I, I haven't looked in enough detail to be able to really take them apart. But I would say that they're pretty harsh, whichever way you look at it. And I think that's an important thing to think about. You know, how, how do we respond to that when thinking about whether to do entrepreneurship and what the opportunity represents? Now, just to give the other side of the coin to that, I think it's demonstrably true that entrepreneurship is the best way to achieve financial freedom or to to make your fortune in our day and age. And that is also borne out in the statistics. So again, looking at American data, the majority of affluent people are self-made entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs make up less than 20% of the workforce in America, but account for 66% of the millionaires. 
and 80% of them are self-made, they're first generation wealth holders. Out of the richest 1% of Americans, more than 9 in 10 are entrepreneurs who made their own fortunes. And that comes from uh, Thomas Stanley's book, The Millionaire Next Door. So we're dealing with a, a profile where you've, you've got you know, a, a low overall survival rate and high risks involved in entrepreneurship. But the people who are financially making it, if you like, in our society are predominantly entrepreneurs. So what do we make of these statistics? You know, there's a potentially high reward financially, but there's also a high financial risk. Well, I would be really interested to hear what your thoughts about this are. I'll give you my perspective on it. I think looking at the financial risk in entrepreneurship is a very clear reminder of how important it is to have intrinsic motivations for doing entrepreneurship. Because if you are doing entrepreneurship for the extrinsic motivation of you know, fame and fortune, if you like, of being one of the kind of rock star entrepreneurs, you're setting yourself up for a huge amount of frustration, let alone the risk that we've just talked about. It is just so hard. So for me, the financial risks really are a reminder that it's really important to do entrepreneurship because you find it fulfilling and to do it for the intrinsic motivations and intrinsic rewards that it can give you. And those intrinsic motivations are talked about very well in um, Dan Pink's book, Drive. And he describes the three types of intrinsic motivation. The first is purpose, the sense that you are doing something that is meaningful to you, that you, know, you, you want to start a business because you want to see the product or service that you're making provided in the world to make people's lives better, to actually help people and to to make a difference and that is a really important motivation that gives you fulfillment in the face of the, all of the risks that you still have to take in order to, to, to achieve that. The second intrinsic motivation is for the sense of freedom and autonomy that entrepreneurship provides and this is you know all about the opportunity to make your own choices about how to live your life and about what you want to do with your time and how you want to try and make your living and to get the chance to direct yourself, to, to really choose for yourself how to build your business and do what you think is the right way to do business. And that, again, is a hugely rewarding aspect of entrepreneurship that keeps you going in the face of these financial risks that we talked about. And the third intrinsic motivation is the opportunity to experience mastery, to get fulfillment from becoming better at what you do. And entrepreneurship is, again, a, a great vehicle to really uh, experience that kind of fulfillment. It's a big challenge, and there's a lot of things that you uh, need to learn and need to master, just in terms of all the skills and, and techniques and so forth. You need to learn how to negotiate, you need to learn how to sell, you need to learn a lot of technical stuff, whatever your business is about the business itself, you need to learn how to um, analyze your business. So there's a great opportunity there to take on those challenges and experience yourself mastering them, becoming better and better at, at all of these skills. And that in itself is hugely rewarding. I think the most exciting thing about entrepreneurship is that it is a fantastic opportunity to get fulfillment through those intrinsic motivations. And that means that, in a way, you know, the higher risks associated with entrepreneurship, the higher financial risks, are the price that you pay for those fulfillments. That is the admission price for the opportunity to do entrepreneurship because it will allow you to really live a greater sense of your own purpose and to experience a greater sense of freedom and to master your activities in a way that is, is highly fulfilling as well. So does that mean that we should just do entrepreneurship without regard to the financial side of things? You know, is the idea to just enjoy the sense of purpose and the sense of, of 
uh, freedom and the opportunity to master these skills and kind of not worry about the money and just hope that the money comes. My view is, no, absolutely not. My view is that it's really important to be very clear about your motivations with regard to money. But there are very different ways of thinking about money, either as an extrinsic motivator or in relation to your intrinsic motivations. What I mean by that is that if you view money as a chance to show off your riches, if you like, that's an extrinsic motivator. And extrinsic motivations never make you happy. And all, all the research uh, shows that. But, but when you think about it, one of the core intrinsic motivations for doing entrepreneurship is freedom, autonomy. And financial freedom is a big part of the experience of freedom and autonomy that you can get through entrepreneurship. So I think it's very important to have a clear motive to make money if you are going to become an entrepreneur, but not because you want to sort of, I don't know, win some competition or be richer than other people or experience power over other people or anything like that. No, those aren't the motivations. The intrinsic motivation is so that you are free, so that you get to experience the financial freedom to be able to develop your business under your own steam without being dependent on loans or debts or other stakeholders and so forth, so that you get the freedom to decide what you want to do with your future, whether you want to carry on with the business or whether you want to sell it and do other things with your life, as I've chose to do. So that's the intrinsic motivation when it comes to money. I hope that um, thinking about these risks and rewards um, in terms of what your intrinsic motivations are that will keep you going in entrepreneurship is something that can be helpful to you. And I'm really, really curious and interested to hear what your experiences are. What are your thoughts when it comes to the financial risks of entrepreneurship and the financial rewards? How do you think about money? And how do you see it fitting in to the experience of entrepreneurship for you as an entrepreneur? I'd love to hear your thoughts and any feedback that you have on, uh, on the ideas that I've expressed as well. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.